Hi, I'm Meena Nagpal from Magic Bricks. We have Mr. Akshay Devani from Assets Group with us. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Tell us about the Bangalore real estate market. What is in demand currently? So I think that uh, Bangalore is a predominantly mid-segment market. I think the average pricing in Bangalore sort of tilts at around five and a half thousand odd base price. So you're looking at an average ticket size at around 75 to 80 lakhs where the market sits. There are high-end projects in Bangalore, but I don't think there is much dominance of those projects. So if we have to see the overall development of the city, I think it stands at around 5,500 rupees a square feet. I think Bangalore aggregates probably a turnover close to 18 to 20,000 crores by selling close to 35 to 40,000 apartments in a year, which is predominantly dominated by IT. And, and I think that summarizes and sums up Bangalore as a market. Where did you buy this piece of land uh, and why Hill? Why 63 degree East Hill? So, uh, if we uh, ignore the airport, which is a recent five year development, IT in Bangalore is focused from East to the South. And, and, and the major belts for IT has been around Whitefield, Sajapur, predominantly around the ORR and Sajapur becomes a natural market, coming the way down to Electronic City and then moving to Banirgatta. So if we see around 75 to 80% of the IT is dominated here. So there is a huge captive demand. Now when there is a huge captive demand, there are various segments uh, which require houses. It's just not necessary there would be requirement of a five and a half to six thousand rupees. There would be requirement for a four thousand rupees. There would be a requirement for a three, three and a half thousand rupees. So there is a reasonable demand in these particular regions. And and hence as assets, most of our large projects are focused on these areas. We have recently gone to north because we feel that's the future growth corridor uh, going and un just like any other city in the world whenever there's an airport which is built the city generally aligns to the airport and you've seen it time and again and i don't think anything will happen differently in bangalore as well it'll it'll happen but if you have to go by complete consumer matrix demand matrix uh, captive consumption matrix it'll all stand between the west to the south and hence we sort of chose this location we feel Sarjapur is a winner amongst even these four locations because even in the IT sector there is segmentation of crowd so if you see the average rentals in Sarjapur on ORR would be close to around 60 to 65 rupees a square feet. It ranges depending on the quality of the building. Majority of the biggest headquarters, which are Bangalore based headquarters are around this area. Wipro is from here. Infosys is building a campus out here. Goldman Sachs is sort of coming in here. Uber is around here. So Sajapur dominates between these IT hubs as well. So, so it's a very natural choice to have a location of Sajapur Road uh, doing that. We also feel Sajapur Road is now truly congested. And I think it's completely exhausted out whatever land was available, whatever projects had to be built, are built, sold, and they've appreciated significantly in, in value. I think the Sajapur growth curve could be more than 60 to 70 percent in the last, I would say, four years. That's the kind of appreciation the main road has seen. I think post a main road getting developed in a particular locality, we start moving to the to the branches of those roads. And I think the road we are talking about or where this location resides is a natural branch. And I think it's a logical choice for a consumer to come in if they want a particular house in this budget. Okay. So, uh, who's the, what's the profile of your buyers? Where is the demand coming in from? So they are buyers which are from the IT segment as I mentioned that this is predominantly an IT belt They're working around here. I think we are targeting a salary base 
between 15 to not even 15 actually 12 lakhs to 24 lakhs is what we are targeting as a home buyer depending on whether he's buying a one bedroom two bedroom or a three bedroom it could be a double income couple looking at around a 20 lakh rupee wage typically housing contributes close to 15 to 25 percent of the annual earnings of an household uh, that's 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 what we generally feel and and basis that we come up with the average salary levels which we target or we sort of design for uh, what happens in segments between when you're targeting an average average salary level of 12 to 20 lakhs the product quality dips so there is a when you go above 30 lakh salary bracket there are developers trying to give qualitative products yeah. but the moment it sort of steps down the the qualitative products which are available for this segment is low which we felt was a general vacuum and void in in this particular segment so we are trying to fill in and saying hey it doesn't matter if even this is your segment we'll try to give you even a better product than what is being offered at a higher segment and and, and i think that's the vision behind 63 degree east uh, it's no compromise in terms of design quality we use a grade contractors we use my one shuttering we have marble finish tiles we are they're also not repetitive in nature so you get a natural finish we import all our doors from italy yeah. nothing is sort of manufactured here the 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 upvc sections are all uh, german sections i don't think even uh, uh, five and a half six thousand segment is offering what we are offering at a four thousand rupee value forget that i think we are maybe competing with a ten thousand rupee segment and and we feel that it it doesn't cost that much it's all about value engineering to give that upgrade to the person you know subconsciously we uh, start bucketing crowds and then we have this habit of saying okay if it is affordable segment you apply these specifications if this is a mid segment apply these specifications if this is a little better segment apply these specifications you know it's it's a way and and i just don't understand why a consumer cannot get qualitative specifications when he's buying at a affordable rate means that was a fundamental question which i always keep on asking if you can value engineer them i think you have addressed a huge demand or a huge sort of pocket of people who aspire that kind of a lifestyle and living and i think that's what 63 degree east uh, sort of uh, aspires to be so i think it's 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 that only so i, I think we are all driven by what we make so and and hence uh, if you can order offer a product which is of a value that's the one bedroom apartment i think, I think it's very difficult to encompass a, a value proposition in 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 one go so let me break it down so i think that uh, first foremost i think a consumer needs to address the real situation in which we are living and in growth corridors the municipal corporation or the municipality or the civic support generally comes in five to six years later then uh, envisaged so you end up moving in a growth corridor and then you are at the mercy of the the civic authorities to sort of build the social infrastructure civic infrastructure more than social infrastructure around you i think at 63 degree east we have reasonably tried to handle that we've been pretty reasonably sustainable in terms of which can sustain for a consumer till the civic infrastructure comes in like say small measures like 74 percent of the water we've tried to reuse and recycle so external dependency on water is 26 percent there are good uh, there are absolutely well developed waste converter rooms manure rooms reuse rooms so that again your waste generation is completely minimized and recycled Similarly, there are the various aspects which are softer points, which could be the light, wind, energy, planning, which because you will have electricity cutouts, how can we make cooler homes in, in 
in which you can sustain without the infrastructure requirements or power cuts or electricity cuts so i think these are very essential factors which one really needs to look at given the situation today in in the real world we are living in it cannot be an isolated buy on what is the square feet of my house what is the per square feet price this one is offering a b and c i think a lot of value goes and a lot of cost goes in creating a sustainable neighborhood and i i think one should one should expect that from 63 degree east the second uh, proposition is design i feel design is something which i i simply say you can upgrade everything in your house but you can never change concrete because once concrete is poured and it's built that's it that's the final form which one inherits you can make it fashionable you can window dress it you can change it but you can't change the concrete so i think it's the way the layouts and the floor plans play out there's a lot of thought which has gone into it like a simple example i can give a 10 by 11 room in a in in a in a, uh, a segment and and ask the consumer to give an wardrobe which which sort of is the most formidable and bulky part of the room when you enter and there's a bed tucked in in a corner it makes you feel claustrophobic or i can simply give you a 10 by 10 room and i can push out a 5 by 2 space which is a tucked wardrobe giving you a 10 by 10 clear room there is a substantial difference between buying into a 10 by 11 room with a wardrobe which will be in it or buying a 10 by 10 room with a tucked wardrobe in it and 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 you can visually see it at 63 degrees which you will understand now these factors determine your life because that's what you're going to live in on a day to day basis and and these things can only be done at the planning stage with mind thought and design So I think what we have tried to do is we try to equip the customer in a lower surface area, higher volume area. That's what that's what we are trying to give to a consumer of 63 degrees. So there's a lot of emphasis of design. Even the touch and feel points. I feel that in India when you enter into a lobby it's either granite depending on the segment it's vitrified tiles it's when you enter it's it's a very basic temperament you have you know it's 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 it, it, everything your landscape to your look and feel to your lobbies to your clubhouse determine the mood of your life so when you go to a spa it's not that they have done anything different all they do is it's very concretized it's green it's natural it's and and your sensibilities and your mood changes it's nothing to do with the space it's the mood and the temperament which the designer or that particular space offers you so we've taken a lot of effort in 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 determining the temperament of this place and and we feel that we want we want to have a sense of attitude we want to have a sense of style we want to have a sense of temperament for people who live here and a definition and and which defines them and 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 i think that will Uh, you know uh, that's the differentiating factor it's the clubhouse it's it's we are looking at options which are cotton steel finish cladding which is probably abroad you would find it in northern europe the entire clubhouse is a concrete form uh, it's it's got water bodies inside it's 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 got a feel and a sense uh, which which you feel like you enter you you feel relaxed there swimming pools which are step down so there are length swimming pools there are leisure swimming pools uh, you know it's 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 got that everything for for everybody even even the the way the landscape spaces are designed now i can take a 20000 square feet of a landscape space and i can just make it a big garden or i can sort of segregate the 20000 into areas which are more intimate it could be one could have a barbecue in a corner one could have a chat in a corner one could be intimate in a corner one could have the sense of space in a corner these forms and temperaments are defined at the design stage and they they really determine the way a a life one lives i think it's just not your house it's it's what 
everything and how the project encompasses and incorporates it's 25 acres you know in the middle of 25 acres we had a six acre property which we had 300 full grown trees we could have easily cut off all those trees we could have really made buildings out there and we could have sold and it's highly profitable to do that but we didn't do that we we have retained 195 old maybe 50 to 100 year old trees in the complex and we have plonked row houses meticulously and we have saved those trees a majority of the buildings at 63 degree east are looking at these 195 trees they are a lung space uh, to get this today it's it's not what what we built it's what you inherit or created over the past hundred years is what 63 degree east is offering it's 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 not just a project with buildings plonked with some landscape and a clubhouse it is the nature and a combination of lifestyle and a temperament in a sustainable form fashion which complements design which is presented to you